Access Executive Committee meeting on this day, Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. Stephanie, could you lead us in taking roll? I would be happy to. Uh, actually, don't we, don't we need to start with uh, house rules first? Uh, Chair Commissioner Downey, we can't hear you. Yes, please review the the uh, uh, meeting protocols and rules. Okay. This commission meeting will be on Zoom via teleconference and held at the California Commission on Disability Access Headquarters, located at 400 R Street, Suite 312, Sacramento, California, 95811. Quorum requirements shall be consistent with the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act, including, if applicable, any quorum requirements pertaining to teleconferences. Members of the public may participate by Zoom or teleconference from any location. This meeting is being captioned and recorded. To assist in this effort, please state your first and last name each time you speak and speak loud and clear. The stream text live captioning link has been included in the chat for your use and staff may provide the link when asked. Public participants can use the raise hand function to alert the committee of when they would like to speak. And we will also give the opportunity for public members who have called into the meeting, at which time they may, can unmute themselves. If you are attending this meeting via teleconference, please press star six on your keypad to unmute or mute yourself. If you would like to alert CCDA, press star nine to telephonically raise your hand and staff will call on you. To use the raise hand function, please follow these steps. If using, what, uh, if using Zoom via web browser, first click on the icon labeled reactions in the toolbar on the bottom center of your screen. After clicking reactions, a new window will show on your screen. At the bottom right of your screen, there will be a button labeled raise hand. If using Zoom via mobile device, first click the three sideways dots labeled more. The more option is in the toolbar in the bottom right corner of the screen. After clicking more, a new window will pop up at the bottom of your screen, then praise the raise hand button. Please remember to mute yourself if you are not speaking in order to reduce noise. If you are having technical issues throughout the meeting and need assistance, please use the chat function to alert CCA staff or email CCDA at dgs.ca.gov. And I will now turn it over to Chair Commissioner Downey. Thank you. Um, now it's time for agenda item number one, roll call. Stephanie, can you take it over again? Stephanie, can you hear us? Apologies, oh. I, I was still muted. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, Chair Commissioner Downey? Present. All right. Uh, Commissioner Holloway? Okay. Commissioner Dillard? Okay. Uh, Commissioner L. Hessen? Present. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lemus? And Commissioner Lillibridge? Present. All right, and with that, we have established quorum. And uh, if there are some other commissioners who are not on the committee who uh, may identify themselves at this time. All right, just, this is Commissioner Ramirez. I am uh, not on the, uh, the committee, but I'm, I'm part of the commission joining you all from Los Angeles. This is Jacqueline, this Commissioner is Jacqueline. This is Commissioner Jacqueline Jackson joining you for, on the telephone from San Diego. And this is Commissioner Luciana Profazza joining you on the telephone from Menlo Park. Uh, Co Chair Commissioner Downey, those are the commissioners attending, not on the committee. Thank you, Ms. Chair Commissioner Downey. At this time, are there members of the public that are joining us uh, uh, 
virtually the slides were identified. Uh, Chair Commissioner Downey, your microphone is very soft. I apologize. At this time, are there members of the public joining us virtually that would like to identify themselves? Please do so. Yes. Commissioner Downey, we do have Karina Roy from DGS in uh, in participation. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, of course, we do have Karina Roy from DGS uh, in participation. Yeah, there's just no window. Um, Sorry, there's just not an on-off indicator uh, that gives me positive identification. So um, at this time, are there members of the public that are joining us virtually that would like to identify themselves? Chair Commissioner uh, Downey, we do not have any hands raised at this time from members of the public wanting to identify themselves and uh, no, um, no comments in the chat. Sorry, uh, are there any members of the public that have joined us here in person that would like to identify themselves? Chair Commissioner Downey, this is Executive Director Dawson. There is there are no public attendees in the audience today, and I can let you know if they if that changes. So uh, then it's time for agenda item number two, uh, approval of uh, our meeting minutes from our last executive committee meeting held on Wednesday, October eleventh, twenty twenty three. So uh, first, are there any questions uh, or comments regarding the, the uh, meeting minutes? Nope. Uh, any, uh, any comments from members of the commission, uh, of the uh, executive committee? Chair Commissioner Downey, there are no hands raised from uh, committee me members attending virtually. Okay, with that then, could I have a uh, motion to approve? So moved, Commissioner L. Hessen. I think that was a motion by uh, Vice Chair Brian Holloway and then second by Dr. L. Hassan. Can I just make a quick comment that uh, we're not hearing you on our end of the virtual attendees. I think you need to either speak closer to the mic because I notice your voice fades in and out. And Sorry, I, I was turning my head. I think as it was okay. fading in and out. I'll, I'll put it. I'll put the microphone on a muzzle right up. Oh, there. you sound great right now. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Testing. Got it. Got it. I'm... That sounds much better. Okay. okay. All right. So then uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, to approve the meetings, uh, Stephanie, could you lead us in a uh, in a roll call vote? Stephanie, can you? Hear Apologies. Us? Uh, yes, uh, Chair Commissioner Downey. Abstain. Okay, uh, Commissioner Holloway. Aye. Commissioner Dillard. Uh, Commissioner Do Dr. El Hassan? Aye. Commissioner Lemus? Uh, Commissioner Lillibridge? Aye. Okay. That is uh, approved. Thank you. With that, we'll move on to item number three. Uh, so that's an uh, uh, opportunity for uh, members of the public to address the commission regarding uh, items that are not on the agenda. 
Uh, are there any members of the public that would like to address this item uh, joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, we do not have any hands raised at this time or chat from members of the public who would like to speak at this time. And as it does not appear that anybody's joined us in person for the meeting from the public, we'll move on to agenda, agenda item number four. Okay. So this will be an update uh, and discussions regarding the uh, executive director report and the financial report. For that, I'll refer the topic to uh, the agenda item to our exec CCDA executive director, April Dawson. Thank you, Chair Commissioner Downey. This is uh, Executive Director April Dawson Rawlings. And uh, I just wanted to share that uh, as of hopefully by the time of the next meeting, my name will be legally changed to April Dawson Rawlings. I got married. And so um, April Dawson Rawlings and April Dawson is the same person. <laughs> so um, I will go ahead and, and talk a little bit about, uh, this is the part of the meeting where the executive director briefs the executive committee on you know, programmatic, administrative, and financial updates and operational updates regarding the commission. So I just wanted to share an exciting program highlight that back in December, CCDA again partnered with the city of San Jose to conduct a webinar for small businesses and the disability community on accessibility. I believe 33 people were in attendance, uh, which was, I thought, pretty good for a, a weekday night um, event. And it was, it was pretty evenly split between business people and people with disabilities. And uh, you'll recall that the city of San Jose partnered with the CCDA back in August for an in-person listening forum. So this was the hybrid version, the, the online version of, of the listening forum um, since we weren't able to go with a hybrid model for this first forum. So it was really well attended. It uh, included a training component uh, by a local uh, certified access specialist, uh, a Q&A portion, as well as uh, a, a back and forth rich discussion between uh, representatives from the local uh, independent living center, Silicon Valley Independent Living Center, uh, as well as a customer with a disability and uh, several uh, local business association representatives in Silicon Valley who talked about you know, the challenges and opportunities for access for people with disabilities for businesses in the Silicon Valley region. And, uh, so we're looking forward to future collaborations to come and I'll share later in this agenda about where we're at with our listening forums. I also, I, uh, there's an update for commissioner vacancies. Uh, the, the, the paper version of my executive director report indicates there are no vacancies, but I did receive confirmation that immediate past chair, uh, Guy Lima, commissioner Guy Lemus, um, did, uh, officially, uh, share with his appointing authority, the Senate Rules Committee, that he is uh, no longer on the commission. Uh, and so his term ended on 1-1-2024, and he's unable to continue um, until someone else is uh, appointed, which means that we have an open slot right now on our commission. Uh, I have spoken to the Senate Rules Committee appointments uh, director, and uh, they will be utilizing their consultants and reaching out to us to conduct outreach to the disability community to find someone to not replace, because that can't happen, immediate past year Lemus, but uh, to find someone on the dis disability community representation side for our commission. I also want to share that uh, Commissioner Leon Vasquez has a term that also expired on 1124, but she is able to continue serving until uh, her appointing authority uh, decides on her reappointment. And I have reached out to her appointing authority to ask about that. And I will update the commission on how that's going. And we are planning to uh, honor uh, immediate past chair Lemus at a future meeting. And I won't share any of the details because I don't want to ruin the surprise, but we, we do want to honor him for his years of service on the commission and, and to the executive committee and to the formation of CCDA that he was instrumental in. I'm also happy to report that Chair Commissioner Downey and 
Commissioner Lillibridge were both reappointed by the governor to two to uh, new three year terms and their Senate confirmations are moving through the process. So I'm really happy that they're still that they're still providing leadership to us and they're still with us. I also have some staffing updates. We're conducting interviews this week for our open office tech position. This person is going to help with our, our portal with a lot of uh, administrative tasks, a lot of office clerk tasks that are really instrumental to how we move through our work. Because as you all know, I know, unfortunately, you see all the paper that <laughs> is required of you. And uh, that person is going to be instrumental in kind of relieving some of the staff pressure so that our other staff can focus on program uh, related, more program related work. And they'll be supervised by operations manager, Phil McFall. And our, we do also still have an SSA AGPA hybrid open position. It's in the final stages of review uh, with the DGS Office of Human Resources. And our hope is that it is published shortly. I think that we're at the, almost to the finish line of getting that published. We had to do some revisions, um, but as soon as it's, green lighted, we will publish it. And then it'll have a couple weeks on the on the personnel website, and then we'll be able to interview for that position. And then soon we will be fully staffed. This is the part of the uh, executive directory report where I normally have financials. I did check in with our budgets, um, our budgets analyst, and they indicated to me that budgets is still finalizing uh, our most recent um, financial report. And based on just how I, how I like to report to boards, I prefer to give you financials that have been um, green lighted by budgets rather than just printing drafts from our dashboard. But I thought that I could use this opportunity to just share how, how we've been, uh, you know, working on our processes for making sure that we're also tracking our financials and expenditures and, um, internally, as well as working with our budgets and accounting partners. So as many of you know, uh, CCDA is nested in the ISD division, uh, which is um, interagency services division. And there is a staff person uh, named Mark Doty, who is working with CCDA and the other programs uh, to assist us with creating financial and contract tracking and monitor monitoring procedures uh, to help us better track our funds and make wise decisions before the end of each fiscal year. I know I shared it at prior executive committee meetings that I wanted to make sure that we were able to forecast our budget much earlier, able to spend down our funds appropriately, and also uh, be careful not to over or severely underspend in our contracts to know how much, when our contracts come due, how long it, how long it takes for us to, um, to apply for new contracts or to renew them and also to just make sure that we're fight fiscally healthy. And so with Mark's help, we've been able to create some, some updated tracking sheets. We also have utilized a staff member with a background in bookkeeping uh, who reports to Phil, who uh, is in the process of preparing all of those tracking sheets. And we have started to uh, prepare fin internal financial reports on a monthly basis. Phil reviews them, and then I review them, and then uh, Mark reviews them, and then we review them with our deputy, which is Brent Jamison. And so I'm really excited about this, that we have these processes in place now, and I think it'll help us to not have surprises at the end of each fiscal year. Um, so I'm excited about that. And um, I'm really confident in, in the direction we're moving with our financial management. And, um, and also we do appreciate the budgets department's assistance with preparing uh, official, official financial reports for the commission. And so I expect to have the quarter two financials, which is through the end of December 2023 uh, report at the full commission meeting. Sometimes what happens is that their closing period tends to overlap with our executive committee meetings. Uh, so um, it's, it's nobody's fault. It's the way that things are closing. Um, I do want to share that our high frequency litigant fund has, substan has substantially increased in um, the amount that we have available to spend. Uh, originally, uh, when I first reported to the commission back in April, 
I think it was actually April of 2023, uh, so almost a year ago, about how to spend the funds. We had $152,000 in our high frequency litigant fund. A few months later, that increased to 397,000, and now we have 608,000. <laughs> so that's the good news. The the news, I won't say bad news, but the, the the opportunity and the challenge is that we still have the same amount of time to spend the funds down. And so we have to encumber those funds by the end of this fiscal year and spend down the funds uh, by the end of uh, 63026. So a lot of my original plans for spending down the funds have uh, encumbered most of the original amount of the funds, uh, but we still have about um, a little a, a little less than half a million dollars left to encumber before June. And so I'm working with staff on creative ideas for how we can spend those funds down um, in that amount of time and encumber those funds. So it's it's a good problem to have. And for those of you who may not know what the high frequency litigant funds purpose is, it's it's a very broad purpose, but it's to be used toward increasing disability access. So it's, essentially it's just another fund to help increase our mission. And I also wanted to share that um, I know Commissioner Dillard had a question at the last, in, at the October executive uh, committee meeting about what, it, what, it, what the departmental services uh, line item meant in our budget financial report. And that is just the, 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 the share of cost of IT, HR and accounting that's spread across all DGS programs. And I also just wanted to give a quick highlight about some of the conferences and meetings and presentations I've attended. I continue to meet with Chair Downey uh, monthly. I also meet with Vice Chair Holloway. I think we're pretty pretty monthly, I think. <laughs> and I also meet with uh, Commissioner Claire, who is also the state architect, pretty much monthly as well. And um, because we have a lot, of, a lot of our technical documents and projects we share with, with, with her office. I also uh, meet with the deputy who is uh, over the, di the division that CCDA is nested in, and that helps us to keep up the collaboration between DGS and CCDA and, and to highlight any issues, and Brent's always very responsive and helpful. And I've also, uh, I'll share this, I'll, uh, some of these meetings I won't go over individually because that they are covered in different parts of the report, but I've been active talking to different industry groups about our toolkits. I attended a training on AI with the Department of DGS, which was very interesting. And I also attended a really great event on DEIA that featured the first partner and a pre panel presentation about how state agencies and divisions could incorporate DEIA values and state practices and uh, also been talking a lot with some other state partners such as at the Department of Rehabilitation. So have been actively working on all of our projects. And with that, that concludes my report and I'm happy to hear any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, CCDA Executive Director April Dawson Reynolds. Is that right? Rawlings, Rawlings, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, First, are there any uh, comments from members of the executive committee that are joining us virtually? Um, yes, this is Commissioner L. Hessen. Okay. Um, I, I have a question in regards to spending down the um, litigation fund. Is that also in, um, to support education and outreach literature and information? Like, could we use it for our ADA video that we've been talking about, making it, um, for other languages such as Spanish, I know that the silk at the Georgia um, state was looking at getting our support to make the video. And I think I shared it with you, April, about um, their ADA inclusion video that they have. Hi, Commissioner Dr. L. Hessen. This is uh, this is April. Yes, we are allowed to use those funds for that. And I actually um, I'll have an an update on that at our at our ENO meeting, but but I am working on 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 utilizing funds to to create videos uh, such as the the one you're talking about to to towards education and outreach and using utilizing the fund toward that. The different languages, yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Different languages too. Yes, right. right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any comments from members of the executive committee that are here in person on this agenda item? Yeah, this is Commissioner Littlebridge. I have a question for April. Um, the uh, Along the lines of the high frequency litigant fund, uh, how, refresh my memory, how long have we been collecting that? I'm not sure. I actually need to 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 look up when when that first started to be allowed. I know that um, uh, my predecessor was the person that was able to help advocate for us to get that. It, I think it's been a couple of years now. So I'm just curious about how, are we have we been able to track it enough to where we're actually budgeting for that as an as an income source, or is it? basically from quarter to quarter a windfall that we can that's that's a question that i that i have been really trying to what i would prefer is that we budget for it and that we just act like it's another line item in our budget another funding source and i think that for a long time we've thought of it as this sort of this extra money that we have um but it but it really is it really is just um another another line item you know source of funding it's not super you know special special so i think that um i know i've been talking a lot with budgets about how we could better track it and also just trying to come to a better understanding of how often we we it it, it increases how it gets increased and also just how we could spend it down in in a meaningful way you know within the within the time constraints one of the one of the confusions that i had is usually when you have like a fund like that you usually it usually you get you know more time to spin down different segments of the fund and i'm not i'm not really sure um and, and i'm trying to find the answer about why it keeps increasing but we have the same amount of time to spend it down so <laughs> So we don't have a perfect. So it's so the system for tracking and everything. I think is something that we're that we're making sure that we are improve on and get better at. But but we know. But the good news is we know how much we have and we know how much we've spent and we have plan are have plans for spending it. So. <laughs> yeah, and this, this commissioner Littlebridge, I I guess, yeah, it's hard if it's not uh if it's not a fixed fee that we're getting on a regular basis. It's really kind of hard to plan for. So it's kind of a loaded question. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh. However, from you know an annual planning, strategic planning standpoint, and maybe earmarking at least you know a conservative amount, such that issues like Dr. Sual Hassan mentioned, uh, those can be planned for, and uh, instead of kind of being uh, more or less an afterthought on spending something that we don't have yet. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you for your answer. I know it's a hard one to to answer. <laughs> I appreciate your question. Keep asking those things. <laughs> Commissioner Diller. My question. Uh, Commissioner Diller, if you could speak into your microphone, please. Can you hear me now? Yes, much clearer. With the same line of questioning, I'm just curious um, in terms of the scope for that funds, is it well-defined or is there some leap? leave way there. I was told uh, by accounting and budgets when I first started that that the definition is to be used to increase disability access. So essentially to it's an extra another another source of funding in our budget to to increase our mission. So I was told that it because it's a time limited fund, it shouldn't be used for things like, you know, positions or or things that that need to be funded in perpetuity, but that basically anything to increase our mission is what we could use it for as long as as we could tie it back to deliverables to increasing access compliance so we so so far we've used it for our listening forums um, and we've used it for our language translation of our technical documents so things like that are there any other comments from members of the executive committee that are here in person Hearing none, are there any comments or questions from members of the public that are joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, there are no hands currently raised or chat uh, messages from members of the public attending virtually. Okay. Um, have any members of the public joined us here in person? No? Okay, then we'll move on to agenda item number five. Uh, important discussion on uh, strategic or strategic plan. 
sorry. Uh, for that, again, I refer this topic to uh, uh, April Dawson Rawlings. Thank you. You'll you'll we'll get it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. a little sleep deprived. <laughs> Hi, this is uh, Executive Director Dawson Rawlings, and I wanted to share an update about uh, the strategic plan document process uh, for the commission, as well as uh, seek your approval for uh, the scaffolding of uh, the uh, of the strategic plan creation that I have uh, thought of based on your feedback. So at our prior, excuse me, I'm a little close to the mic. At our prior executive committee meeting, I actually uh, made a mistake. I, I was under the impression that our that that our uh, strategic plan that we're currently utilizing expired at the end of 2023, and I was corrected after I went back and reread the document um, that it actually expires at the end of this year. So we're actually in the final year of a five-year strategic plan, which means that we have this year to work on our strategic planning process uh, so that in 2025 we can commence a new five-year strategic plan. Uh, so I, I did hear I did hear from you know many of of the commissioners uh, when we talked about this back in October, and uh, what I propose is that we hire a consultant uh, to help work with management and uh, the commission to guide us through our strategic planning process and that that strategic planning process with the consultant should also include forming a committee similar to the committee that uh, we've used for our toolkit uh, projects uh, where it, it would be a it, several different uh, stakeholder groups. It would be stakeholder groups uh, that could help us inform uh, our strategic plan. Um, and that the reason I think that a consultant would be a good idea, and I've, I've heard that many of you uh, feel the same, is that a consultant would allow us to, to each of us step out of the role of the facilitator and be a, part, a participant so that it doesn't turn into, you know, April strategic plan or or chair down, not that it would, but or chair down a strategic plan. It would literally be something where the, the consultant would be able to assist us with um, guiding us through the plan. And then what they would do is they would report, they would report to me and uh, they would be in charge of co-facilitating the stakeholder groups. I envision the stakeholder groups being maybe every other month or at least quarterly and then at each commission meeting in 2024, uh, starting once the consultant is hired, they would give regular updates to the executive committee and the full commission, and then uh, present drafts toward the end of the year. Um, based on how, how long it takes to do contracts, um, it'll take probably about six months to four to six months to bring someone on. Uh, so probably we're looking at like, late summer fallish um, to have that person onboarded. So a lot of the work will be done. We're probably looking at not having a draft of the strategic plan until, you know, the first, maybe by the end of the first quarter of 2025. Um, but we're still working on our strategic plan. We're still doing our mandate. We'll still have a strategic plan that starts in 2025. So I wanted to get your feedback on that. And if you think that that sounds like a good, a good plan for us to move forward with our strategic planning process, that uh, if there's a motion to, to approve that, and then we can, then I can move forward with, with just making sure that I understand the clear direction of, of how we'd like to go with that. And happy to take questions. This is I'll start, a, start with a question here myself. Uh, uh, I don't see that as a, uh, Thing we're voting on in this in this meeting is that a mistake it's an action item but i i i verbalized i think where i thrown you off is i verbalized i verbalized the idea as opposed to wrote it up on a okay so you do or you are seeking a motion to approve i'd like so, to yes okay. Be, yeah all right, thank you. all right with that uh are there any comments from members of the executive committee that would like to address this item virtually I, this is Commissioner L. Hessen, and in reviewing the minutes, I see that I had accepted to be chair for the Strategic Planning Committee. So we are now 
from my understanding, changing the direction and so that we would have the consultant, we wouldn't be needing a chair for that. Is that correct? Hi, Commissioner Dr. Al Hessen. I'm just reviewing what you what you. It was in the minutes, and I saw that, and I thought, oh, I did volunteer, <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that because I think that was an action item we approved, if I'm not mistaken, to form a subcommittee for the strategic plan. So I think. I'm reviewing the minutes too, but I what I what I re recall is that we uh, we talked about uh, having me come back to a future meeting with a with a clear pl with a plan of action, um, and that I know that I think that there were I think I do recall that there was a discussion about having that having that um, you know creating that 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 subcommittee that stakeholder group. Um, but I didn't recall it being like officially, officially what we were going to to do. But I did Commissioner Littlebridge, as I as I read through the very last bullet, was a suggestion that this be brought before the full commission at the meeting. And so I think maybe we need to refer to the minutes at the October was it twenty fifth meeting to determine what the resolution on that was. Okay. We didn't October have October 11th was the executive committee and uh -huh. then Does that make sense? That makes sense. Hi, this is executive uh, director Dawson Rawlings. I apologize for that and I know maybe the, some wires may have got crossed because I wasn't at the October 25th meeting um and I just read back the uh the recording. And so how about we pivot for a second and so I've I've shared ideas for how I think we should uh go go forth with the strategic plan. I could all this is also going to be added to the agenda for the October full commission meeting. It's already on the agenda. And so um I could seek your feedback and then seek the the rest of the commissioner's feedback and then an, an action could be I think the reason why um I was seeking the action in the executive committee is the executive committee is the is is in the bylaws text with working on the strategic plan. So I just but but I just wanted, but I, but we could also take it before the full commission and have them come to an agreement on the plan too. And I could, I could have a deeper presentation also. Um, but, but the feedback that I received in back in October from from this committee was that you know it sounded like we wanted to move forward with hiring a consultant and that we wanted to move forward with have definitely having a stakeholder group, but that the consultant could help us flesh out what that stakeholder group looked like. So this is uh, Vice Chair Holloway. Um, how about a motion from the executive committee that would recommend that the full commission proceed uh, with the strategic plan as outlined, outlined uh, by uh, our executive director and authorize her to start the process now, anticipating full board support, full commission support. We, you know, get several weeks of um, additional effort there. That sounds Is that good. a motion? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a motion. I'll second that. Commissioner Lillibridge seconds. Uh, is there further conversation? There's a question from Commissioner uh, Executive Committee member, uh, Commissioner Greg Dillard. Uh, Commissioner Dillard, we can't hear you at this time. I had it in my mouth, though. <laughs> it just wasn't on. <laughs> uh, if I remember correctly, it was my understanding, because there there were a lot of questions at that meeting, but it was my understanding it was going to come back to the executive board. And the executive board was going to talk about it and come up with a recommendation. Because I think I even made a comment about should it be a subcommittee or versus part of the executive committee. So for me, I think there's still some things out there not resolved. 
I do agree with the idea of having someone, professional person coming in and, and pretty much overlooking everything. I agree with that 100%. But I think some of the other things I'm not too sure about. This is Executive Director Dawson Rawlings. Uh, I appreciate that feedback. And so um, based on what the Executive Committee would like to do, I'm, I'm happy to come back to a I, I will be uh, talking about this at the full commission meeting, and I can also come back to the executive committee meeting with a uh, with a clearer with a clearer laid out plan about how the strategic planning um, will go. But in the meantime, what I can do is I I can start the process since the contracting does take several months. Since there does seem to be a consensus that we should have a consultant, I can start that part. And if you decide that that's not what you want to do, we don't have to hire the person officially. This is uh, uh, exec, uh, Commissioner Chair Downey. Can you remember my own name position at this point? Uh, that sounds like a, a, a good plan. Uh, I do think it's uh, important that we proceed, uh, make some progress, uh, but uh, we need to make sure we're covering our bases. And at any rate, we'll, it seems like a consultant is going to be a part of it. Uh, and uh, But it's important that we pull together the uh, the mechanism within the executive committee, a subcommittee, stakeholders, and all to, to pull that together. Uh, so uh, I think we can proceed along that those um, that that path. And I believe that the motion that we had uh, actually perhaps you could restate it, framing it that way. Commissioner Hall, I think it was Commissioner Hallway. <laughs> Yeah, Commissioner Holloway, uh, I would recommend that the executive committee pass a motion to uh, recommend approval of the strategic plan effort uh, to the full commission, action by them. In the meantime, our executive director would assemble the steps to uh, implement the process or the implementation of the effort to renew the strategic plan. In essence, we're sending a recommendation to the commission to approve the plan, but in essence, allow you to get the steps, allow the executive director to get the steps done while we're in the process of going to the full commission. Save some time that way. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I uh, This is a executive director, uh, Dawson Rawlings. I just had a quick a quick thought. One of the things that we, we did learn um, from a prior project that we did is that if we have too many of the steps baked before the consultant is hired, sometimes it, 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 it makes the project less successful. So I apologize if, if my presentation was overly broad and I'll, I'll recognize that for the future, but I think um, there are some steps that I could put together now, but I, I do think it would be helpful to have the consultant to, to assist with uh, their thoughts about, you know, what I could do in the meantime is that your motion would still apply. Um, but I also think I could also, uh, you know, get some steps together, but also, um, and to think about who should be on the stakeholder groups and how often they should meet and those kinds of things, but then Try not to do too many deep, too much deep diving without the consultant there, so that we don't have to backtrack or people or so they could be successful. But I think your your motion would still apply. I just wanted to share that that thought. Um, this is Commissioner Hassan. May I speak? Yes. Um, what I'm hearing you say, um, April, is basically you're and correct me if I'm wrong. You're looking for a motion in order to. Um, have the executive council approve moving forward with at least um, for this, for example, the consultant, and then next step will be discussed with the full commission. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So this the is Commissioner Lillibridge. I have a question about do do you. Um, April, have an idea of what that procurement process is for bringing on a consultant? So it so I, it involves uh, writing a scope of work um, and uh, submitting it to our, our contracts unit. And um, it can take, 
it can take anywhere from, I, I think their average is about between four and seven, seven months at the longest and four months at the shortest. Uh, and then they would go out, they do all the bidding and things like that, but we make sure, but my job is to make sure the scope of work is clear and that we, so, you know, based on my prior experience bringing on consultants, I'll make sure that I put a lot in the, in the scope of work about the type of person that I think we, we need and those kinds of things. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about making sure that the stakeholder groups, um, that person has to have experience with, you know, stakeholder groups and equity and, and, and understanding disability and business and those things. So I share Holloway, that's the kind of effort I was talking about between now and Yes. Okay, so this is Chair Commissioner Downey. Uh, see if we've had uh, questions and comments amongst the executive committee members, both virtual and in person. Are there any comments from members of the public joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, there are no hands raised or comments from the chat from members of the public attending virtually. Okay, uh, then uh, I. Yeah. This is Commissioner Ramirez. Is this where I could ask a question as a member of public? Yes. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. I also did want to follow up. This is one of the reasons that I was here, because I did recall a conversation um, uh, for the subcommittee uh, work and then the, the question of the, the paid consultant. Uh, so I, um, I do have a more of a recall uh, for the uh, subcommittee work. Um, and that's usually in some of our other places how that also uh, can occur depending on how the bylaws are written. But I, I did recall that. So I did definitely appreciate um, a deeper uh, look. I'm gonna definitely look at my card transcript from the last meeting, uh, just to make sure that I, that I know what I'm talking about. Thank you. So again, are there any other comments from members of the public, including Commissioner is not on the executive committee uh, that are joining us virtually that would like to address this item. Uh, Chair Commissioner Downey, I do not see any other hands raised or chat uh, from members of the public, including other commissioners. Okay, uh, have any members of the public joined us here in person? No, and it's here. Okay. Then. Uh, that then brings us to a, a, uh, a vote on the motion uh, for this. Uh, I believe we're, we're going off page here, but I believe we'll, that'll re require a roll call vote. Yes, thank you, so, uh, Chair Commissioner Dim. I have a second, I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chair Commissioner Downey, I'll be happy to lead the roll call vote. Uh, all right. uh, Chair Commissioner Downey? Aye. Uh, was that an aye? I apologize. Aye. Excellent. Uh, Commissioner Holloway? Aye. Commissioner Dillard? Aye. Commissioner aye. Dr. L. Hessen? Aye. Uh, Commissioner uh, Lemus? Commissioner Lillibridge? Aye. And the, the motion passes. Thank you. If there are no further discussion. I'll then move forward to uh, agenda item number six. Uh, so, presentation and uh, discussion of the updates to bylaws. And for that, we'll refer it again to, sorry, with that, we'll uh, refer this item to our executive director. Uh, April Dawson Rawlings. Thank you, Chair Commissioner Downey. This is uh, this is April. I just wanted to give an update about where we are with the bylaws. We are we so just to just to to backtrack. We've had uh, two or three conversations uh, related to the bylaws. The bylaws give the executive committee the authority to every two years uh, make recommended changes to the bylaws. So we're 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 at our mandate, we're doing our mandate. Uh, the last update was uh, at the end of 2021. And so we're, we, we talked about it in 2023. And uh, so the goal is to take action on it in 2024. And um, so 
after at the last executive committee meeting, I presented suggested edits uh, and um, also uh, sent our uh, bylaw draft to our our legal department. And um, both the executive committee and our legal department came back with some with some edits. We have incorporated those edits internally and have um, a third draft prepared. Uh, and that draft is currently uh, being reviewed by our legal department. So at the my hope is that at at a in the at an executive committee in the near future, um, we will be able to review uh, the uh, the more final draft incorporating your edits from from the October meeting as well as the new edits from legal um, and uh, be able to to vote on the final draft um, pen, pending no further edits. So we're on track and doing what we're supposed to be doing is what I wanted to share today. And you will be receiving a, a presentation from me on the final draft either in June or September. Thank you, April. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Downey, uh, if that concludes your comments, we'll then uh, open it up to comments or questions from members of the executive committee joining us virtually. Chair, Commissioner Downey, I do not see any hands raised or comments from members of the executive committee attending virtually at this time. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from members of the executive committee joining us here in person? Hearing none, are there any questions from uh, commissioners or members of the public joining us virtually? Uh, Chair Commissioner Downey, uh, Dr. Sue L. Hessen has raised her hand. Oh. Okay. Back to you, Dr. I, I was slow in my, my reaction time. Um, I have a question. So initially we talked about the bylaws that the whole executive council will be working on and um, Will then be brought to the entire commission for discussion. Is that still the plan? Hi, Commissioner Dr. L. Hessen. That is, it is still the plan for the for the commission to be able to review. Um, however, in the bylaws, the executive committee um, is the is the committee that review reviews and recommends changes to the bylaws. And so um, once it passes through the executive committee, the, the full commission will receive. Um, the final draft and be able to, to make any comments or suggestions um, and uh, so that the bylaws can be finalized. So is there any order of priority as um, which ones we should be looking at first? Which by, so yes. the, so there's only one set of bylaws. Oh. Um, you mean, you mean sections or? Right. Like, it, like I know we're working on our bylaws for a, other commission. Um, for the LA County Commission on Public Service that I'm on. And there's certain um, bylaws that are way outdated. So we're re looking at them and finding out which ones are a priority right now. And I was just thinking along those lines. But if I'm wrong, please correct me. Hi, Commissioner Dr. L. Hessen. This is April. So uh, so we at the at the um so the CCDA has by has governing bylaws, it's only one document. And um, so there's not multiple documents across different parts of CCDA. Um, and so we're only looking at our bylaws that, uh, that talk about how we operate. And so um, just at our last commission meeting, um, the, uh, at, excuse me, at our last executive committee meeting, uh, the executive committee uh, reviewed a rough draft um, and legal also reviewed uh, that and one more subsequent draft. We incorporated those edits, but uh, the legal department is still looking at uh, at the document before we can release it again to the executive committee. And so as soon as um, I have those comments back from the legal, the executive committee will be able to look at the, the draft, the newest draft, draft number three, at a future meeting, hopefully in June, um, and at the latest September, but I, I don't think it's going to take six months to do that. So I think at the at the next executive committee meeting, you'll you'll have a draft number three, and anything, and the, you'll be able to share if anything else needs to be changed, and then it'll go back to legal again, and then eventually the full commission will see the final final draft that passes out of the executive committee. 
Okay. Okay, I got that. So are there any times that new bylaws would be generated? Like if we're moving into like an AI scenario or we're looking at having permanent uh, virtual uh, meetings, which I, hopefully that's going to be happening soon under the new, some new um, legislation that's coming out. Like, do we look at new bylaw, I mean, generation of new bylaws as needed? Or um, it's just the same pattern. I, I'm not quite clear in regards to, as we're evolving and growing as a commission, how do we look at whether we need new bylaws or generate new bylaws? That's that's a great question, Commissioner Dr. L. Hessen. So uh, prior leaders of, of CCDA uh, decided that every two years we should look at our bylaws to make sure that they're they're current. And that's for to give you an example, this current iteration, uh, the last draft we did, we did delete quite a few um, outdated laws and regulations that don't apply anymore. And this and you're right, this is a perfect opportunity when you're looking at the bylaws to say, are do these still reflect how we operate? Do these still reflect our values? And so uh, the when I so I think that at the last um, executive committee meeting in October, you all actually gave a lot of comments like that that we incorporated into the draft that's that's that legal is looking at right now. And so you you are doing that, whether you know you're doing it, you're you are doing that. And so I t I love what you asked, and I think if when the bylaws come, the, when the next draft is ready to be shown to you at the next meeting. Definitely ask questions like that. Read the draft and 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 challenge us if you think that it doesn't reflect, you know, how we should operate. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is Chair Commissioner Downey. At this point, I'll open it again to members of the public and other commissioners that are joining us virtually. Chair Commissioner Downey, uh, Commissioner Ramirez has their hand raised. No, thank you. Um, and thank you for that clarification, because I think the previous conversation um, regarding the strategic planning is a good example of uh, one of the one of the things that needs to be updated within the within the bylaws. One of the things that we know best practices for commissions and both private and, and nonprofits is that utilizing your full board membership in the development of new strategic goals and strategic planning for your agency is part of the equity work that we advance. Uh, both uh, to promote inclusion, equity, diversity, and accessibility. So that's an example of some of the best practices that have been in place and developing primarily and really successful practices that we know have benefited uh, the communities, particularly during the COVID pandemic. By having the availability of a full membership to be able to assist you in that particular process with the strategic planet ensures that it is uh, built from the bottom up, first of all, that it is inclusive of people with disabilities, but that you have an opportunity to really have a diverse participation that is done from the beginning and not later on as people get asked to join in. So I really wanted to highlight um, as well the, the comment that, that Commissioner Hansen just mentioned in, in the need to really update some of our bylaws so that they reflect some of the work that we're advancing, uh, particularly at the state level in regards to equity. Thank you. Uh, Chair Commissioner Downey, there are currently no other hands raised from members of the public or other commissioners attending at this time. Uh, Status report on uh, members of the public joining us here in person. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Downey, there, there are no, unless you count my imaginary friend, there are no humans. <laughs> All are welcome. <laughs> okay, uh, then we'll move on to agenda item number seven, uh, which is hey. oh uh, the updates and discussion regarding listing forms. So back to April Dawson, Rawlings. Thank you, Chair Commissioner Downey. 
I am excited to talk with you about our listening forums. Um, many of you uh, may recall that uh, last year I presented a plan to have um, a minimum of three to four uh, listening forums uh, a year uh, for the next three years as part of an initiative to uh, engage municipal governments, people with disabilities, and the business community to uh, have conversations about how we're more alike than we're different, to offer you know, vital training to the business community about including people with disabilities um, in their businesses and seeing them as customers and a vital uh, source of income and, and, and revenue and ways to, you know, to further our mission and to get us out there on a regional level as opposed to just at the statewide Sacramento or Sacramento uh, centric level. And so I know that I've shared uh, many times that in August, we kicked that off with our San Jose listening forum. We followed that up in September, excuse me, in, we followed that up in December with our webinar in San Jose. And we currently have two more uh, events scheduled with municipalities and local businesses and people with disabilities within those municipalities. We On April 11th, we will be hosting a listening forum for the County of Monterey. So the County of Monterey's Civil Rights Office, as well as their Commission on Disability, as well as the, uh, as well as our partners at CBPA will be um, putting on a, a forum that will be very similar in format to the San Jose forum. There'll be a panel and there will be a, um, an opportunity to, for small businesses to come to to the forum to ask questions about access. And there will be a person from the state architect's office there, as well as a local CASP. There will also be a training by a, a CASP, which stands for Certified Access Specialist on just the basics of um, access compliance for businesses. So we're excited that there will be a Q&A component. Businesses will be able to get their questions answered, as well as um, there will be ASL captioning and language translation. Uh, there will be Spanish and other languages upon request. And we've also had conversations with the County of Monterey to host separate forums uh, for their for the more rural parts of the county. So we are hosting this forum in Salinas on April 11th from three to five, and we will be uh, showing that on our website and our social media channels so that you can get that out to your members uh, of the, uh, to your networks. Uh, but we're also going to be doing some follow-ups, uh, particularly for some of the indigenous communities in Monterey. Uh, we've talked about that because we want to make sure that this forum doesn't exclude anyone who uh, wouldn't be able to get to Salinas since the County of Monterey has many different geographic pieces to it. So we're excited about that. We also, uh, the following week, we're going to have a, what we're calling a, it's not really a lunch and learn, it's more of a breakfast and learn. Uh, we're going to have a webinar that is yet to be titled uh, for the city of Sunnyvale. Uh, the city of Sunnyvale attended our San Jose forum and asked us to come and do a presentation. Uh, so we're actually partnering with the Pacific ADA Center again and to conduct um, sort of a mini listening forum. Uh, their needs are more on the training side, so it's not gonna be a full forum, but it's gonna be targeted for small business owners in the city of Sunnyvale. And that will be either the April 17th or 18th, and we're getting that finalized. And then we are also planning a greater Los Angeles forum as well as a Sacramento forum. Those dates have not been determined yet, but I have reached out to several strategic partners from both those regions. And we're starting meetings this month about uh, planning those. So we're on track and we're already doing a lot of good work. And uh, we plan to continue to tie the communities that we, we reach out to, to the data that's found in our annual report uh, under our top 10 um, disability access, alleged disability access violation, um, the top 10 list that we create for the state legislature every year. We always talk about where are the top 10 areas where we've seen trends of disability access litigation. And we try to tie our programming and our outreach to those communities first. And so we're, we're definitely doing a data-driven approach to how we're drilling down into those regions. 
So I'm really excited and we're gaining momentum. Thank you. This is Chair Commissioner Downey. Thank you for that report. With that, do we have any questions from members of the executive committee joining us virtually on this uh, item? Chair Commissioner Downey, uh, there appears to be no hands raised from members of the executive committee attending at this time. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from members of the executive committee that are here in person? This is Chair Commissioner Downey. I'll, I'll take the liberty of uh, just asking just for my information. I'm curious if the uh, the specific inclusion of peoples with uh, the indigenous peoples, uh, is that in the Monterey uh, County, uh, is that in any way informed by the, the data collection? Thank you, Chair Commissioner Downey. This is April. So the reason why we want to make sure that we're including the, the, the Oaxacan community in the County of Monterey is because when we were meeting with the Civil Rights Office, they mentioned that uh, members of those indigenous communities uh, are often business owners who uh, who don't always get um, heard in their county, and they wanted to make sure that since we're trying to go through the lens of equity, that um, they they weren't sure if if members of the of the Oaxacan community could come to this forum, but they wanted us to do specific outreach to them in the future, and they found that going to them is easier than them coming to us. So we just didn't want to exclude a segment of, of the County of Monterey. And the reason why we're doing the forum in Salinas is because they that, that community did trend on our data. So it's just including members of the County of Monterey business community that are, that are not always heard the way they should be in these types of situations. So our plan would be to have some in-person forums um, in, on a smaller scale where they, where they live. Um, as opposed to them having to come to the county, the, to the county seat. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair Commissioner Dalian. Thank you for that clarification and additional information. So uh, are there any mem uh, comments from members of the commission or from members of the public that are joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, um, there appears to be no indication of any public members that would like to comment on this item. Proceeding on the basis that nobody's joined us in person from the members of the public. So we'll move on to agenda item eight. So for this, it's the uh, update regarding the social media pilot. Sorry, I've been turning away from the mic. Uh, that was an agenda item regarding the, the social media uh, pilot. So uh, again, back to our executive director, April Dawson Rawlings. Thank you, Chair Commissioner Downey. I just wanted to report that we have launched a pilot uh, in partnership with the Department of General Services. So um, right when I first started, uh, particularly at the Education and Outreach Committee, but also this committee and the full commission expressed a strong desire for me to pursue uh, our ability to have our own uh, social media channels. And so I worked with our, our Office of Public Affairs at DGS, and they agreed to uh, give us um, a Facebook and YouTube channel. And we are currently um, in the first month of a six-month pilot wh where we, um, and what that entails is that we have to maintain 90 followers on Facebook, and we have to post a minimum of three times a week with the majority of those posts having some kind of uh, visual or video, which will of course be made fully accessible and described um, with captioning and, and such. And um, at the end of the pilot, uh, that will be you that data will be used to determine if CCDA can. Um, and other departments besides CCD, I'm trying to think how to phrase this. The department, the Department of General Services will use the data from our pilot to determine if CCDA will be given, um, you know, the ability to have our own username and password um, for those, and 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 use it as a guide for how other other uh, 
commissions and programs within DGS uh, will uh, be treated as far as requests to have their own social media accounts. And so in, in essence, we're sort of leading the way to, um, to helping make sure that um, people who have you know, vital information to give uh, can can give it. And so right now uh, we have a we have an, an official Facebook and YouTube channel. And so please uh, give it a like and a follow. And um, I know that our, our outreach coordinator sent uh, at the beginning of the week information about about how to do that. And um, I think we can go way beyond 90 followers. I think that we will be able to really get ourselves out there. And part of the reason why this was so important is that prior to this media pilot, in order for CCDA to post information, we were limited to our website. And we also um, could only go through the DGS handle. Um, so now we actually are able to, of course, include DGS, but have our own brand identity uh, so that uh, businesses and people with disabilities and, and governments and other stakeholders can really start to see, oh, this is CCDA, this is what CCDA does, and getting us out to different people. And we are planning to make sure that our Facebook posts also include multiple languages and uh, making sure that our materials, are, it's a way to showcase our materials and a, a way to showcase our events and a way to just get some access tips out there and make sure the public gets interested in what we do so that people learn that we're out there. So I'm really excited that we've been able to launch those, those mediums and uh, look forward to all your help getting us out there. Thank you. Thank you for that report. This is Chair Commissioner Downey. Any comments from members of the executive committee that are joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, uh, Commissioner Dr. L. Hessen would like to comment on this agenda item. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. L. Hassan. Thank you. I, I, that's an exciting achievement. Thank you, April. I think that's great. Um, I was curious to ask, so if one of the commissioners um, wanted to post something, an event in an area, whether it's in Northern California or in um, our Southern region, um, does it, can we send it to you or how does that work? Like if there's something that we'd like to post? whether it's um, like you're, you're posting in regards to um, training for small businesses and let, you know, letting people know about it or um, how we would post if a video was done on it, something like that. How, how, what's the process? I guess I'm trying to ask, I'm sorry. What's the process of posting something on either YouTube or the Facebook account from one of the um, executive council or commission members, or can we? I guess that's the question. Hey, Commissioner Dr. L. Hessen, uh, the process as it exists now was that is that you can send it to me, and I will uh, then uh, review it and share it with uh, our outreach coordinator, uh, Presley Strother. And then what happens is is that we 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 submit the draft through our, through a service portal and the, um, each of our posts has to still be approved by the office of, of still has to be approved by OPA, the, um, and I'm forgetting the, the acronym, <laughs> public affairs, I apologize, OPA. Uh, so every post has to be approved by the office of, uh, of Pub public affairs. But just start with me, and I'll make sure that I we 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 make sure it looks accessible and and get, has the flyer and the the verbiage you want. And then if if we're able to post it, then we would send it to OPA for approval, and then they put it up on our page for us. Okay, thank you. Yes, and so yeah, looking forward to receiving those. Thank you, thank you for getting us out there. You could also tag us, and if you have posts that are related to you know disability access, mm -hmm. you could tag us, um, and then it should show up the way that it would normally um, in anybody if someone tags someone on Facebook. So we're also asking our partners to help tag us so that we also get our page out there and that we could see your your information that way too. Great. Okay. Thank you. This is Chair Commissioner Downey. Uh, are there any comments from members of the executive committee that are here in person?
then I'll, I'll jump in with a question. Do, do we have a sort of a timeline on what it's, how long it's going to take uh, for OPC approval? Hi, Chair Commissioner Downey. This is April. OPA usually approves our posts within minutes. They there's we've we've launched we launched this at, at the end of last week, and I and we have I think four or five posts up already, and I think we have like three or four more uh, that have already been approved for the rest of the week. And so we've been posting daily since our since our pilot launched on March first. And um, so there's no there has been no delay. They've been really great about that. Excellent. And so it's uh, it's Presley that's uh, the staff in charge of, of sort of keeping up with all the, the metrics and making it all happen as, as required. <laughs> this is uh, this is April. Uh, Presley is our outreach coordinator. And um, it, I mean, ultimately, the, the responsibility rests with me. But yes, she is the staff member that is is the, the outreach coordinator. And uh, she she and I and Phil work really closely together. Uh, to follow the plan that OPA approved, and um, but I would it would be it would be helpful if you have something to send it to me first. I think I think that would be helpful. That way I could help get it get it approved faster and streamlined with Presley. Yeah. This is Chair, Chair Commissioner down again. Yeah, that my attempt uh, purpose of that wasn't in going around you. I, to me, it, I know <laughs> it's a more matter of it seeming like something we wanted to do for a long time. It sounds like it's setting a precedence, uh, potentially setting a precedence with NDGS. I think it's really important that we make good use of this opportunity and that it, it really, it really sing with what we're doing. So that's, that's all I'm excited about it. And thanks for the good work and making it happen. Any other comments from members of the executive committee here in person? And I also hope you'll get, uh, get a lot of, uh, uh, collaboration with ENO who's right up there, Alley. I think this is something that was coming through that commi committee in, anyway. So any further comments from members of the public or other commissioners joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, public member Commissioner Ramirez would like to comment on this agenda item. Commissioner Ramirez? Your turn. Yes, thank you. This is Commissioner Ramirez. Uh, this is really exciting too. I did see um, the the YouTube and Facebook. I already subscribed to the YouTube channel and like your Facebook. Uh, so you definitely won't want to have uh, problems with that um, that small metric. Uh, one of the things that I really want to recommend um, as you're doing this is to obtain content guidelines uh, from the agency that is uh, making the final review so that they could be adjusted or incorporated uh, into your decision-making process, April, or to have it kind of standardized to facilitate when people share information or resources and it makes it more streamlined and faster and it shows that there's already a policy in place this is also one of the new kind of elements that it's being incorporated into uh, new bylaws for a lot of agencies social media uh, and communications and then just one last uh, recommendation is to uh, secure um, in uh, all of the other major uh, so social media assets to uh, secure the, the same uh, name or brand, even if you're not utilizing them, just so that you can maintain uh, 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 ownership of that brand, uh, particularly for things like um, uh, X, formerly uh, Twitter uh, and uh, Instagram, which are, or even um, uh, LinkedIn, which are uh, particularly uh, a high usage in the business sector. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Downey, oh, uh, Chair Downey, at this time, there are no indication from any members of the public uh, or other commissioners that are attending uh, that they would like to comment. Okay. Thank you, and uh, no members of the public have joined us here in person. So with that, we'll move on to agenda item nine. Uh, so it's an update and discussion regarding the accessible parking campaign and things must be getting serious because we now have a new acronym, APC. For that, I'll turn it over to our executive director, April Dawson Rawlings. Thank you, Chair Commissioner Downey. This is April. I just wanted to give an update about where the, the APC, which stands for Accessible Parking Campaign Toolkit, uh, lands. So uh, I always try to give a give a 
an update of how far we've come just for new voices in the room. So for about the last eight, I think for, it's pretty much been, I think going for at least 18 months uh, now, we have had a really robust process uh, for creating toolkits. So there was a, there was an assembly bill uh, that was passed in the 2022 legislative session, um, AB 2917, which required CCDA to uh, create a, to a toolkit um, to educate uh, businesses about the importance of accessible parking, as well as exterior passive travel, and also to start tracking um, alleged disability access website violations. And so we launched the accessible parking campaign after that law was passed. Um, and we convened uh, stakeholder groups. Eventually those stakeholder groups, uh, there became a need for two stakeholder groups for business owners and operators and facility owners, as well as construction, the construction industry, because it was determined that those two, that those two groups were similar, but it might have some unique needs and, and, and interest in training. And so those groups met for the better part of a year. And then uh, since then, it, the, two, the, the one toolkit is now two toolkits, uh, business owners and operators and, um, and the construction industry. Since our last meeting, uh, we uh, have had both toolkits reviewed by uh, the state architect, uh, the uh, real estate services division at DGS or RESD, who also have uh, certified access specialists and architects um, on staff. And we also have had it reviewed by the, the construction toolkit was also additionally reviewed by by CALBO, which is the uh, business, the building officials group, as well as the contractor state license board. It was really uh, so the so the contractor state license board has agreed to uh, to to for the construction toolkit has agreed to um, to promote the toolkit alongside of us. And so we will be releasing the, when the construction toolkit is finalized, we'll be releasing it with, uh, in, you know, in partnership with the CSLB. And we also, um, we were very grateful that we were able to have CALBO, uh, the building officials group, take one final look at the construction toolkit. And they actually found a, a couple of suggestions for, for some very minor edits to some of our drawings. So what we did is we took uh, their suggestions and we sent them to our consultant at, at RESD, the Real Estate Services Division at DGS, who's helping us um, finalize the toolkit. We gave that to our consultant. Uh, she was able to update the drawings and um, we also were able to um, make some final changes to the construction toolkit. For the business owner toolkit, uh, after the state architect reviewed it, we in integrated some very minor changes. And so that toolkit is, is pretty much done. Uh, we're just wanting to make sure that the, that the drawings that um, the building officials group uh, wanted us to replace, also some of them we used in the business owner toolkit. So we just needed to replace those. And so in short, uh, the toolkits are in the very, very final tweaking stages internally. And um, I do know that, uh, so barring any, any, any final editing internal things, uh, we expect them to go for a vote in March at the March full commission meeting. Uh, the only thing that would change that is my motto is always to do right and not be right. And so if uh, we do one final, final review and there's something that could be made better to make it usable for our stakeholders, then, 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 then that's the only reason it wouldn't be put up for a vote in March. But I have a lot of confidence that, that we're getting to the very, to the place where we're going to be able to vote on it at the, either the next, at the next full commission meeting. So <laughs> I'm, I'm putting my confidence out there that that's going to happen. <laughs> Thank you for that report. Yeah, it's been a, a, a long and winding road, but we're getting there and it's exciting and, and a major piece. And I think it's, you know, it's squarely targeted on, on, on sort of the, at the root of the drive-by lawsuit. So much of this has been handled in the parking lot. At some point, they got to go inside. No problem. Be good. Uh, so anyway, thanks for that progress, that report. Uh, do we have any comments from members of the executive committee that are joining us virtually? 
Chair Commissioner Downey, at this time, uh, there are no, there appears to be no indication from any public members uh, or from any executive committee members that would like to comment on this topic. Thank you. Are there any comments from members of the executive committee here in person on this agenda item? Okay. Uh, any comments from members of the public that, on, that are joining us virtually on this agenda item? Chair Commissioner Downey, there appears to be no indication from any members of the public that would like to comment on this agenda item. Okay, thank you. With that, we'll move on to agenda. I think it's uh, uh, item 10. Uh, so it's an update and discussion regarding the, I believe it's 2023 annual report. For that, we're back again to Executive Director. April Dawson Rawlings. I'm getting faster. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Downey. Chair, thank you, Chair Commissioner Downey. This is April. This will this will be very brief. I just wanted to share that uh, we are ahead of schedule compared to where we were last year in submitting the uh, 2023 annual report draft uh, up the chain to be able to be approved to submit to the state legislature as per our st statutory mandate. And we um, just finished a final review of the data and I, it's being reviewed now. Um, some final review of the data is taking place this week at the management level, and then it'll be sent to, uh, to all there's, there's, there's quite an extensive list of people that need to look at it and approve it and have it be sent to them before it can go to the legislature. And so, um, that will happen shortly, and we're 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 I think we're about six months ahead of schedule from where we were last year. Um, so we're excited that that will happen. And um, one of the things that I have noticed is that I think it would be a good idea for a future meeting if, if I gave or or staff gave. Maybe it would be good to have some variety in vocal stylings. Um, maybe a. <laughs> maybe our operations manager uh, might might like to give a, a more extensive sort of sneak peek at what's in that report that we give the state legislature and some of how we get our top 10 data and things like that. So count on that for a future meeting, but we're on track for the for, su for submitting the, the annual report to the legislature for 2023. Okay, thank you for that report. Any comments from members of the executive committee joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, there appears to be no indication from executive committee members attending virtually that would like to speak at this time. Thank you. Are there any comments from members of the executive committee here in person? Hearing none, are there any comments from members of the public that would like to address this agenda item? Chair Commissioner Downey, there appears to be no indication from any public members that would like to comment on this agenda item. Okay, uh, with that, then we'll move on to agenda item number 11, and that is uh, on the, uh, oh gosh, uh, on the uh, update and discussion reg regarding the full commission meeting coming up on, uh, I'll turn it over to you, April Dawson. Well, thank you, thank you, Chair Commissioner Downey. This is uh, this is Executive Director Dawson Rawlings. I have to say it one more time. <laughs> um, so the so the full commission meeting will be taking place on March twentieth from ten to four uh, here in Sacramento and also on on Zoom. And uh, we're ha we have several really really great. Uh, topics. I just wanted to share a few of the highlights. We will be having the DGS Office of Legal Services uh, giving us a uh, a training on the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act uh, up updates. So in the last legislative session, there was a, a law that was passed that, that updated Bagley Keene. And um, so particularly in regards to quorum and, and teleconference provisions and things like that. And so our attorney with OLS, uh, Natalie Bocanegra, will uh, be giving a training about that. And it'll give you a chance to, a to hear about how the law has changed and evolved and uh, to answer your questions. So be sure to bring, bring your questions to that training. 
Uh, we'll, we, we will also be uh, giving a special tribute to past Commissioner Betty Wilson, who unfortunately passed away a few months ago. And we, we, are, uh, we, we, we send our, our regards to her family and her friends uh, for everything she's done for CCDA and for the community. And we will be highlighting that and honoring her at the, at the meeting. Uh, we will also be, uh, we will also be uh, discussing, and I am 99.9% .9 confident also taking action on the business owners and operators and construction industry uh, toolkits. And uh, we also will have a special presentation, a training and presentation uh, by the Department of Rehabilitation and their website accessibility expert, uh, Jake Johnson, will be giving a presentation about the WCAG 2.0 and why it's important for businesses to make sure that their, their uh, websites are accessible to people with disabilities for some tips for achieving that. And that'll also lead us into a discussion about CCDA's current and future efforts at uh, training and resources for businesses to achieve website compliance, website accessibility compliance. Uh, we will also be uh, talking about uh, equity in CCDA and talking about how we can incorporate equity into the work that the CCDA does. And I'll, I'll be sharing more information about uh, our listening forums and our disability access education and revolving fund efforts uh, to promote that program and uh, a little bit more about our annual report and other projects that we're working on. So really looking forward to this meeting and looking forward to all of your participation and questions and suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. This is Chair Commissioner Downey. Are there any uh, questions or comments from members of the executive committee joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, there appears to be no indication from any executive committee commissioners that would like to comment on this agenda item. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments or questions from members of the executive committee here in person? Are there any questions, comments, concerns from members of the public joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, there appears to be no indication from any public members that would like to comment on this agenda item. Okay, and we're, nobody's joined us here at the last minute, so we'll move on to agenda item number, well, let's not, yeah, to agenda item 12, uh, suggestions for, for future agenda items. Um, so are there any, members of the executive committee joining us virtually that would like to make suggestions of future agenda items. Chair Commissioner Downey, there appears to be, oh. Sorry. Uh, it's Commissioner O'Hessen. And, and I don't know if this is uh, appropriate or not, so please let me know. I, I wanted to find out, um, does emergency evacuation procedures like for supporting businesses and community uh, to help educate on how to address issues for small businesses in regards to an emergency. I'm, I'm having a hard time getting the message across and I don't know what's the best way. And I was wondering if we can talk about that as a commission, as part of our support to small businesses and community. If it's not appropriate, please let me know. Thank you. We'll take them under consideration. Thank you. Any, any other comments? Okay. Are there any comments from members of the executive committee here in person? Are there any comments uh, from members of the public joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, public member Commissioner Ramirez would like to comment on this agenda item. Commissioner Ramirez. Thank Ramirez. Thank you. This is Commissioner Ramirez. Uh, I really wanted to thank you for this uh, a possible topic of suggestion, and I'm not sure if, again if this is appropriate. But um, the Access Board is coming to Los Angeles County. Uh, the U.S. Access Board is coming to Los Angeles County uh, in April, uh, and similarly, uh, one of the reasons they're coming is in preparation 
uh, for the upcoming uh, uh, U.S. Olympics and Paralympics games, which will be taking place here in Los Angeles County. Uh, and I really wanted to see if this could be a broader topic of exploration uh, to prepare some of our local business partners uh, uh, and providing accessibility to people uh, that are going to be attending. Um, the county and the state is getting ready to send a delegation uh, to Paris and to look at how they are deploying or utilizing their services. And one of the things that we're going to be looking is uh, how are their accessibility uh, processes being created both to facilitate the games, but also to facilitate the business process of, of the participants. And so I really wanted to uh, put this on the radar. Uh, so hopefully we could do some sort of, uh, if, if appropriate, some sort of partnership uh, so that this commission could also be uh, participating um, in, in such a broader uh, conversation and opportunity to highlight disability in the state of California. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. It's a terrific opportunity. Thank you for that. Any other comments from members of the public joining us virtually? Chair Commissioner Downey, uh, there appears to be no indication from any public members that would like to comment on this agenda item. Okay. Let's see. Okay, as a reminder, the full commission hearing will be held on Wednesday, March 20th. So it's not too far away, two weeks away. And that's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Here, and it'll be here in person at 400 R Street. Okay, with that, we'll move on to agenda item 13. Uh, could I have a motion to adjourn? Commissioner Lillibridge, I move that we uh, adjourn. That was Commissioner Lillibridge. Can I have a second? Commissioner Holloway seconds the motion. Thank you. For that, we'll need roll call vote. All right. Uh, this is Stephanie uh, to do the roll call vote. Uh, Chair Commissioner Downey? Aye. Chair uh, Commissioner Holloway? Aye. Commissioner Dillard? Aye. Commissioner Dr. L. Hessen? Aye. Commissioner Lemus? Commissioner Lillibridge. Aye. Okay. Uh, Chair Commissioner Downey, all uh, commis uh, executive committee members' votes have been noted um, and pass it back to you. Okay. Well, it would, would appear the ayes have it. So meeting's adjourned. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. <laughs>